Hello everyone. So in today's uh, video, I'm going to show you how we can uh, do something very cool. Okay, how we're going to create an app that is going to connect to your ESP32 board and from the board, we're going to send a command over to the KL25Z and uh, light up the RGB LEDs on that board there. Alright, so uh, let me just show you a quick demo over here. Alright, so here you can see I have the setup of the app, the ESP32 over here as well as the KL25Z. Alright, so uh, on my app, you know, when I click on the button, uh, check Wi-Fi status, it gives me the current IP address, okay, that it is uh, currently assigned to. Alright, so I fixed the IP address over at my ESP32. And now when I click on the uh, button, red LED on. Alright, so, okay, maybe let me uh, do this again over here. So let me off and on. Alright, so what has just happened is, when I click on the red LED, uh, red on button, I'm sending a command uh, through Wi-Fi, okay, to my ESP32. And at my ESP32, I connected a single LED to one of the GPIO pits, okay, so that lights up. At the same time, uh, this uh, yellow uh, wire over here, that is my uh, serial interface. And I'm uh, transmitting a serial uh, sort of packet over to my KL25Z, alright, and the KL25Z is interpreting that and is... Uh, switching on the RGB LED, the red light alone. Alright, so now if I press the red off, okay, you can see the uh, red goes off. Okay, now let's try the green. Alright, so you can see that now the green LED is on at my KL25Z. Okay, so for the ESP32, I only connected a single LED just to capture the, the event whenever a, a packet is received through the Wi-Fi network. Alright, so only the KL25Z has the RGB LED there. Alright, so I can do the green off over here. Okay, and then the blue. And blue off. Alright, so over here uh, at my scope, okay, I also have uh, hooked up the uh, line, the receive line of the KL25Z. Alright, so it sort of captures uh, whenever a packet is being transmitted. Okay. Yeah, so that sort of shows you the whole thing that we're going to be looking at today. So let me get started all right, and show you step by step how we can do this. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the steps, okay, to uh, sort of uh, put everything together, all right, for the demo that I just showed you. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go to File, click on the Examples, all right, for the Arduino Uno uh, IDE, and go all the way down to Wi-Fi. All right, and look for this uh, uh, available uh, code already given to us called Wi-Fi Scan. Okay, so when you open up Wi-Fi Scan, okay, what it will do for you is to uh, boot up the uh, ESP32. Okay, and it will do a scan of the available networks. All right, and give it to you. All right, and uh, with that, okay, you can also uh, know that your uh, hotspot is working correctly as well as your ESP32 is able to detect your hotspot correctly. Right, so let's uh, go ahead to compile and uh, upload this. So this uh, takes a while, all right? So you need to be a bit patient. It takes a, a few minutes, maybe about two or three minutes to compile and then uh, upload to your bot. Okay, so you don't need to make any changes. You just need to compile and just let it uh, upload. And once it's uploaded, okay, you can uh, open up the serial monitor and um, check uh, for the available uh, networks. One eternity later. So you can see down here it is uh, finished the compilation and it has uh, downloaded it to the ESP32 board. Alright, so what you can do now is to uh, open up your serial monitor. And um, you can see that it has found uh, nine networks here. Alright, so my hotspot is my phone, okay, the first one, the Android. Okay, so this sort of gives us uh, the confidence that the ESP32 is working well, okay, and you can detect your hotspot correctly. All right, so now let's go on to the next step. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Okay, and the next step is to open up the other file. So this is the file that uh, uh, I've uploaded, which is the ESP32 Web Server AI2. All right, so in this, um, what you can do is you uh, once you open it up, all right. So the very first time, okay, uh, that you want to 
run it okay you can uh, comment off this portion here which is to uh, configure the static IP okay so this portion here configure static IP is once you know the IP address all right so if you already know the uh, IP address that your ESP32 is uh, using when it connects to your hotspot then you can fix it all right uh, so if you're not sure you can comment off this part first okay then when it boots up you will, you will know the IP address and subsequently you can go ahead to fill up the IP uh, address details over here all right but again this is optional if you do not want to fix the IP address then uh, you just need to make sure that every time you boot up you use the correct IP address when you want to uh, communicate with your bot all right so in this um, uh, over here what we are basically doing is okay so we don't need to touch about all the wi-fi part okay except the ip address if you wish to now the the part where we are going to communicate okay with the board is over here okay where in the loop all right basically what it will do is okay you are able to communicate uh, with the uh, sort of device okay with a any browser okay and you just need to key in the IP address with a slash and the command that you are sending. Okay, so this request index of okay, this string here is the sort of the uh, command you are sending together with the IP address. Okay, so for example, okay, let me open up my uh, a browser over here. Okay, so uh, since I refreshed my code just now, I need to make sure I refresh in this new code. So let me upload this code first to my uh, ESP32. So this will fix the IP address. All right, make sure that this new code is uh, running. Okay, so as you can see now, this uh, new code has been uh, uploaded. All right, so once you have uploaded this code, all right, uh, you can just reboot your uh, your ESP32. Okay, so as you can see here, if I open up the serial monitor, I actually am able to see that it's connected. All right, so uh, the IP address 192.168.153.189 is there. So let's go ahead. All right, so now you can see it's connected. So when I key in my IP address, okay, in my browser, okay, I don't get, uh, it's a blank page. Okay, there's no error, but it's a blank page. Okay, and that is because we are not currently sending any data uh, from this, we're not hosting any uh, sort of data at this uh, IP address at the moment. All right, so what we can do is we can, uh, send some commands based on what we already have. So if I key in status, okay, as the sort of command that is attached to this IP address, you will give me back this uh, Wi-Fi connected okay, with the IP address uh, that is currently assigned to your um, ESP32. Okay, similarly, I can also do the on red here and off red. So right now, actually, uh, on my board, the red LED is on, okay, and I can also do the off red over here. Okay, and we switch off the LED. Alright, so this is basically what I mentioned uh, where you can design any web interface to directly send commands to your system. Alright, now let me just uh, show you the app interface. Okay, for the app interface, uh, we are using the MIT App Inventor. Alright, it's a very easy um, a block based coding approach. Okay, and uh, if you are new to it, you can check out some of my other videos at the DocR YouTube channel. All right, to sort of get familiarized with the basics okay and over here you are just going to create some simple buttons over here and uh, under the blocks okay what you are basically doing is i am uh, making sure that for each button press i uh, send okay uh, or sort of send uh, the command as a web uh, url all right so this is basically what we key in just now okay the ip address with uh, slash whatever status on red off red whatever all right and basically this will help me to send the commands to the IP address that is mapped to the ESP32. All right, so now, as you can see, the user interface part is actually very easy, very straightforward. Now, over at the ESP32 side, let's just look at what happens. Now, when I send a command over, okay, uh, basically what is happening is, uh, I have a red LED sort of connected to the GPIO pin, pin 26, so that sort of activates, okay. Uh, every time the on uh, command is sent but at the same time what i'm doing is i am doing a serial write okay i'm using serial 2 
Okay, because serial, uh, the, the main serial port is currently used for the uh, debugging and downloading of the code. So serial 2 is now being used to connect my uh, ESP32 to the KL25Z. So that is the uh, yellow color wire just now I showed you. All right. And uh, with that, what happens is, okay, so in terms of the connection, the hardware connection, you can uh, look back at our uh, document okay, that I have shared. Okay, so this is basically the uh, hardware connection where the ESP32 uh, transmit pin, which is TX2 pin, which is pin 17, is connected to the port E23 RX2 of the KL25Z. Okay, so let's, uh, so over the Arduino side, basically I'm sending some commands, okay, uh, sort of a single byte for every command that I receive through the uh, button press. Okay, and over at the KL25Z, basically what I'm doing is I am sort of interpreting that information. Okay, so in the receive poll, I get the data and subsequently I just do some masking, okay, to distinguish between whether it's on or off, all right, and um, call the appropriate LED function. All right, so this is of course uh, up to you to decide how you want to do the mapping. Uh, okay, what I've given you is just one example of how you can do it, all right, you are free to uh, do it whichever way you like all right and then uh, this sort of gives you the whole uh, framework all put together all right so basically what is happening is over at your uh, kl25z uh, so over at your app okay or your web ui you're going to send some commands to the web server okay and the web server okay will receive that okay and you will then send uh, appropriate command over the serial port and your kl25z will receive that through the receive um, code and uh, interrupt that you're going to be writing okay and then that will sort of uh, help you to interpret okay, so of course here i've shown you the polling mode for the project you're supposed to implement the interrupt mode okay and then once you get the data receive data you can interpret it according to how you have uh, designed the protocol all right so that's about it all right so i hope that now you are clear on how everything sort of comes together okay to make this whole thing work all right so Work on it, okay, and I will uh, share more details about this in our next class. Alright, thank you everybody. Bye.